Uh, no, not really, no. <clears throat> um, it was a, a big ask of the lads the other night. I think collectively they, run, they covered the most distance that we've, we've done in a couple of years. So it was a big shift, as you could see. You know, yeah, we had to change things at half time. Um, but the, the, the effort and running they put into the legs first half was a, was a big ask against a very good team. So no injuries, but a lot of fatigue that we need to sort out now to get ready for tomorrow. And um, you're without Chris Meppham and Ethan Amberders, so changes yeah. you will have to make anyway. Yeah, two changes that enforced on us for, for suspensions, which is frustrating, but, you know, um, it wouldn't have changed the outcome of the, of the game. Um, we don't ask players to pull out a tackle as if they're on a booking with one eye on the next game. You know, it, it is what it is. We, we picked a team that we wanted to go and compete and win against Belgium. And unfortunately, two of the players have picked up bookings, which we don't have them available on Sunday, which is frustrating for us. But like I've said, it, uh, it gives others an opportunity now with the World Cup in November to, uh, to play for a position. You've not called anybody up, so you clearly feel you've got sufficient within the squad. Yeah, we, we picked a big squad for that reason, Rob, at the start of the camp. So we, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go with what we've got. And uh, there was already enough enough cover within the squad anyway from the original 27, 28 man squad we selected. Now, Gareth Bale had a cameo appearance on yeah. uh, Thursday night. You know what's coming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll try anyway. Um, yeah. Is it harder now to get Gareth Bale in the, the, the team? than it's ever been since you've taken over. In other words, has he got more competition for his place than he's ever had? I think, I think you look at Aaron, H, Harry, um, Brennan, Kiefer, Daniel James. We've, we've got a great um, headache, put it that way. My, all managers, coaches want headaches like that. It's better to have it like that than, than scratching your head on who can we play. And, uh, so it's a good headache to have. But um, yeah, but look, having seen what he's done for Wales recently, if he's fit and he's available, he's playing. Is he fit? <laughs> he's trained today. He's done really well. OK. Um, <laughs> huge night. <laughs> you know, you don't want to suffer the fate that England suffered last night, do you? No, we, you know, for our development as a nation, you know, we, we've qualified for three major tournaments now consecutively. Um, we want to be playing against the best teams in Europe. So we want to stay in the division, absolutely. We want to expose our younger players now to these types of, of um, players and teams. And, uh, and, and inevitably, they'll become better having gone through those experiences. So I keep saying it, I sound like a stuck record. Well, I do apologise, but you know, because of the final that we had in, in between the two games, had a massive impact on, on how the table looks. But we've given ourselves a fighting chance and we will be approaching the game to win, to stay in this division, without doubt. You've had some wonderful nights at the Cardiff City Stadium. Yeah. And since probably 2015, Wales have found a way to win big games on, in special atmospheres. Are you hoping for that tomorrow and the same? Yeah, absolutely, Robert. You, you're spot on. You know, the, our supporters are magnificent. They play a massive part in, in us being successful as well. You know? And it'll be no different tomorrow night. We, we'll, need that. we'll need that support. Um, we, we'll go all out to get the, the result that we need to stay in the division. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a big part of it. We've, we've had the big players step up in the main for big games. Look at what Aaron did to, you know, against Hungary. Look at what Gareth's done in, in recent games. So, big players turn up and, and it'll be no different tomorrow evening. Last couple from me. How much are you looking at the other opponents in the World Cup even while you're focusing on this? And I would ask you, are you surprised England have been relegated? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised in how the groups panned out. Yeah, uh, we watched the game last night and, you know, up against a very good Italian team who could have scored a couple of more goals as well. So, of course, you're always surprised when, when England don't do so well because of expectations that they've put on themselves over the years. But, um, you know, that's, that's for them to worry about and deal with now. We've got a, a job in hand that we fully focused on and, uh, um, yeah, planning's already gone into the World Cup. You just touched on that and, and I'm off. I'm off to Spain next week to, to watch the USA. They're playing a couple of games in Europe, so I'm off to watch them. So um, at this moment in time, full focus is on our game tomorrow evening. And um, as soon as the final whistle's gone, we'll be planning for the World Cup. Last one from me. Tomorrow night is a World Cup farewell. Yeah. Great words for you to be able to say. Yeah. No manager has said that for Wales since 1958. 
How many of those places are sorted in your mind on the 26th of the plane? Yeah, I think quite a few. If I'm honest, I think I've, you know, I will, uh, I'll be loyal to the group of players that have got us there. They deserve that right to, to play in the World Cup. Um, I won't allow complacency to set in, Rob, because um, the door's always open to, to um, other players who are, who are doing really well. I've given two young lads the experience to come on camp and, and train with the boys and see what the environment's like, and they've really impressed me. So I'm not saying, you know, the squad is picked, the 26 is set. I have a core few that I know will, will be there. But outside of that, there's still places to play for, absolutely. All the best. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hi, Gary. Afternoon. <laughs> You look like you're waiting in trepidation. Hey, listen, I'm going to get straight <laughs> no. to it with, with Gareth. What, what, what are the considerations that, that you have to make not to start him? Um, yeah, he, he, look, it's common sense with Gareth, isn't it? He's, he's not played that many minutes at club. He's had a long journey to get over here. He's trained really well. He, he, um, he done really well for me when he came on the pitch the other night. And he's putting himself in a position now where he you know, potentially could start for us. It's a big game and, and you need your big players and, and again, he falls into that category. So um, he's in a good place at this moment in time. He looked fit when he turned up and he, he looked in a good place and he's shown that in training. Because that's, I think, what, what, why we were asking because there is something on this game. Yeah. When we spoke after, the, you know, you said, forget the World Cup. Was your words to me, forget yeah. the World Cup. This is a final on Sunday. It's an important game. Important games need important players. You, you, you're less... In the, in the position to take liber liberties is probably not quite the right word, but you know what I mean, is, is to have the luxury of maybe resting players. You kind of, when you can, go with your best 11. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big game for us. It is a cup final. We want to win this game. We want to stay in the league. So to do that, you need your best players on the pitch, the best 11 you can select. And um, there'll be no surprises when you see the team sheet. Do you have to work with, to a degree, with LAFC on this one as well because of the way he's managing his minutes with them, but also the training schedule he's on? Again, I know the longer-term picture is to be ready for the for, for the for the World Cup, but is there a maybe a longer-term plan that we're not wholly aware of with Gareth? Yeah, the medical team uh, are in close contact with the medical team in in LA. You know, um, Sean, the head of medical, has already been over within a week of Gareth signing. He was invited over, so the relationship is great with the club, and we'll speak directly with Gareth. And uh, he knows his body inside out. Like I said, the level he goes to to, to recover and to prepare is, is exceptional. So we'll speak with him, but our medical team has got a great relationship with their medical team already. With the injuries you had before the camp, and obviously now losing Mepin and Padu, yeah. does a back four potentially come into play <laughs> from the beginning? <laughs> potentially, yeah. We've got, the, we've got the players to play that, and we, albeit we haven't played it for a while, but we had, we had success doing it um, a couple of years ago. I've been qualified for the Euros, and that's what we played uh, in Baku, and uh, and it worked for us. So it has evolved since then, and and we'll have a look at it to to get the best players on the pitch. But um, yeah, I'm not going to commit to one way, one formation or the other yet. What do you prefer? Well, I, I I like playing three at the back. I think you've seen that in uh, in my in my teams of late, and we've had a lot of success doing it. So um, yeah, again, I don't think there'll be many surprises. Um, just in terms of, again, bigger picture, um, you mentioned there the work starts after the game. Listen, we know the yeah. work started, started already. Yeah. Um, how frustrating is it that you have no opportunity with the squad again after this week? You know, you maximise the time you got on the grass, you maximise the time when you got your 90 minutes of competitive football, but you've pretty much got a seven-week seven hiatus. And yeah. I, you know, is there any possibility of getting a game in in that, in that week? Up to leading up no, to the first, we, the first game against the US? No, potentially we could have, we could have had a friendly uh, after the Sunday we, we, we meet up. Um, but for me, that's it's too risky. You know, we, we don't want to take a, a chance on any of the players six, seven days before um, the opening game. So um, we'd rather not go with that. It's unusual, Garrett, you're right, because normally we'd, we'd take them away for a week and we'd, we'd do all our prep in that week and... Uh, and make sure players that ain't playing many minutes at the club are, are topped up. So by the time we go into that tournament, that everybody's on a, an evil keel. But um, we haven't got that luxury, unfortunately. But everybody's in the same boat. So, you know, we can't grumble too much. We just got to pray that um, it's common sense with COVID and, and the testing and, um, and no injuries so that we have a, uh, a fit group of players turning up on the Sunday when we meet up. Um, j just on the injuries... After the game on, on, on Thursday, you know, Keith obviously came off and he, he's yeah. holding his arm. He seems fine today, yeah. but again, 
is there an injury concern there with, at all with Kiefer? Is, is he okay? What was what's the problem? No, Kiefer's fine. He, he did take a knock to his elbow. He wasn't uh, he wasn't 100 fit going into the game. So to to do what he did in the game was and the effort he put in was um, was surprising to us anyway because he'd had a an illness building up to that. So we, you know we weren't planning to to play him the full game. Um, because of the illness, but um, he's, he's got through it and, and his arm seems to be okay at this moment in time. And listen, just the last one for me, it, it is Poland, you know, good side, very good opposition. Yeah. yeah, you want to win, you want to stay in group A, but also what is the, how do you potentially use this? Poland could be a, a level of opponent that you may come up against in the, in the World Cup. Do you even go there with trying to learn things for, for the World Cup when you're watching against Poland, or is it so yeah. you have to concentrate on trying to win, stay in group A? Yeah, a bit of both, a bit of both. We've seen some footage on them, and uh, they're a very good team. They are a very good team. We we uh, we were unfortunate in the away game to lose the game two one. Johnny played as a ten that game and, and scored a, a, a wonderful goal. Um, we made, I think we had Kiefer and DJ up top for the first forty five minutes because they needed minutes for the to build them up for the final. Um, but it'll be a different team that we play against them tomorrow. We'll we'll um, approach it in that we want to win the game. It's all about us, and it's about us. Um, working on our style again then and, and formation that we want to we want to succeed in, in in the World Cup so it'll be, it'll be about our prep for the World Cup but again we want to win the game to stay in the division alright thanks um, any more questions for Rod yeah Rod can you keep on yeah. hello uh, there Sorry. was that very famous video uh, of the players celebrating when England lost at the uh, the Euros was it? I think. Uh, I just wondered what the mood was seeing England lose then, because you could be the only British team going in as a, a League Nation One uh, outfit into the World Cup. Yeah, there was there was none of that last night. You know, nothing but respect, and uh, we sat and watched the game, and then we went straight down and we had staff meetings last night. We had, we had quite a few meetings last night. We had, it's a quick turnaround from Belgium, to, so there was a lot of analysis that needed to be done as well. But we watched the game. And yeah, they've they've been relegated, and we can just focus on ourselves and making sure that we stay in league A, and uh, and that's all we can we can focus on. Psychologically, if you do win tomorrow, as, yeah. as we all hope, and you know they've been relegated, will that give you a bit of a boost uh, over them before you meet them in the World Cup? No, you look at the group that they're in. I mean, yeah, you'd you'd expect because of the expectations that England have put on themselves because of the success that they've had in in recent times and, and getting to the final of the Euros and. Of course, they're going to be expected to stay in the division. But when you look at the group and watch the game last night and against a very good Italian team that could have scored a couple of more goals than what they did, um, it was always a, a big ask, you know. So I think Hungary surprised a lot of people, and um, I wouldn't read too much into that. It's whatever whatever division we're in, it's going to be a local derby wherever we are in the world, and uh, and form goes out the window, and it's it'll be us against them. Finally, the, uh, the build-up to the World Cup has been quite protracted. Yeah, as soon as the game's over with tomorrow evening, it'll, it'll be honest before we know it. So there's still a lot of planning to, to do. We've we've had quite a few meetings already, building up to it. But um, yeah, once the game's over, we can throw full focus down onto that. And like you said, it's it'll be honest before we know it. Thanks very much. One question, just one question for me. Oh, yeah. You spoke about your World Cup squad there and the influence that you know it could still change between now and then. How much is this camp, do you think, going to influence what the, those players that may be on the fringes of your 26-man squad? Well, I've had an opportunity to look at two young ones in Luke Harris and, and JJ, and they've they've really impressed us. So, um, you know, I'm I'm saying that I pretty much know the squad. There's going to be no major surprises, but they've done themselves no harm. The two young ones, by the way, they've come in, conducted themselves, trained with personality. It, it's been a real beneficial camp for them too, and. Um, and, and like I said, they've done themselves no harm. I'm not saying that they're going to be in the squad because of that, but um, I'm not saying they're not either. So it's, you know, we, we know uh, a very political answer there. We know pretty much the squad is going to be no surprises, but the door's not closed. If people are doing well and it's going to help us to uh, get through the group stages, then I'll definitely consider it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Cheers. Thanks, Cheers, Rob. Yeah.